Now let me show you how to do an illustration painting using the acrylic glazing technique. Hi, I'm Matt Filio, and I'm working on this painting here. It's a book cover illustration uh, for a book by Russell Stendhal, uh, depicting when the Holy Spirit fell upon the early disciples, as recorded in the book of Acts, when they were praying in the upper room. And so I have this in process right now, several layers uh, using the acrylic glazing technique. Just want to continue with this and, and show you how it works. So with the historic acrylic glazing technique, you mix a little bit of paint with a lot of matte medium and it builds a rich uh, depth with a lot of luminosity, allows the light to shine through, reflect through the layers, give the painting more depth, more vibrance, um, really makes the colors look rich and saturated, almost like an oil painting. And so I'm continuing to work on this. I'm gonna add some uh, matte medium here to the palette. And uh, let's zoom in. Let's uh, do a little work on this here. So this is where I'm at in the process. Actually, we'll zoom out just a bit so you can see the full thing. And what we need to do is add some more uh, dark values throughout to allow the light to really shine. You can't really have the light shine without the darkness to set it off. And that's really important for this painting because in this particular um, account, the Holy Spirit came like a rushing wind and then there appeared over them uh, something like tongues of fire. And we want to uh, capture that. And the only way to really capture that is to get the uh, darkness as dark as it should be. Isn't that so much like our lives that in the middle of suffering, in the middle of trials and difficulties, um, we'll often experience real times of blessing. You know, I, I think that's amazing. Well, what I'm doing is taking some ultramarine blue and I'm just adding that to the top here and darkening that ceiling, but I'm keeping the warmer tones toward the bo bottom. Excuse me. So it's really important to keep the warmer tones near the bottom um, and let that blend in because that allows you to really um, get a sense of those darker colors fading to more uh, chromatically intense colors. Just like in the dark, when the lights are off, you really can't tell whether you know somebody's clothing or somebody's vehicle is you know, like a red or maybe uh, kind of a brown. You really can't discern that. Um, I don't know how many brown colors cars they have out there, but you know what I'm saying. Well, same way with this. You need uh, to just keep in mind that it's only when uh, the values are lighter that you can discern the color. So in other words, for darker values, generally the color is going to be cooler, less chromatically intense, but then as you get into the um, lighter values, it's going to get more chromatically intense, warmer tones. Um, so that's why I'm using more of these ultramarine blue tones down there. Now just to see how the glazing technique works, watch this. See how I, I have this going right over the top of this previous layer, you can see right through it. And that's how it works. It's a compound effect. It's like compounded interest. It's compounded effect of layer upon layer. And that's what builds that uh, luminosity, that richness. And it also allows you to do a detailed sketch and see your detail underneath and not lose that detail. So that's super important as well. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna continue to Get some contrast here. I want to figure out what areas are going to be lighter than others. Well, I want this man's clothing to stand out um, against this other, this woman's clothing in the back. So that's important. The colors that they wore back then probably weren't super vibrant, so I don't want to have anything really vibrant. Though I might give her, I might give her um, a green shawl there on the top. I just have to make sure I have something to balance it out or get some green somewhere else in the portrait. Well, let's do that. Let's take this flat edge brush here, a little bit of fresh matte medium, and let's, uh, let's make that green. Let's take a bit of Indian yellow, just a little bit of Indian yellow, and a bit of raw sienna. We'll mix them together, just like that. And you know, I can test it out here on the side. See, when I add that on top, it's yellow, but look what happens around it. 
see how it made that kind of greenish isn't that cool that's how you can do with the acrylic glazing technique um, now I'm going to add some of this color right on top of that shawl and I'll probably have to come on top with some blue later but that just gets that looking a little more greenish and then I might say okay I want to have that color that kind of bluish color repeated so I'm going to mix it with a little bit of blue see I already had some blue on there but I want to mix it with a little blue and uh, let's see we can put it here on this woman's clothing so let's take some straight up blue mix it with this some Indian yellow this is ultramarine blue and Indian yellow and I'm, I'm gonna put this in right here uh, inside this woman's you know clothing so she has her underclothing and then the outer garment that goes on top and I just want to have that green right there and I think that might uh, give us a little bit of balance so it can be a faded green doesn't have to be anything super strong but it would look good to have this guy wearing something kind of reddish not vermilion red but just a little more red so let's take some burnt sienna burnt sienna a little bit of uh, lizard crimson need a little more matte medium to disperse it and then we'll just uh, we'll kind of blend that together and we'll just go right over the top with that and we're just going to warm this up a bit get that looking a little more reddish but I'll probably come in and change that again so you should have that same coloring down there because he has kind of a shawl going over it okay that's good that's good I like that and uh, I think I'll stop off here I just wanted to show that to you thanks for watching this if you like this video give it a thumbs up um, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and uh, yeah, go to realisticacrylicportraitschool.com, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Realistic Acrylic Portrait School at realisticacrylic.com. It's been a long day. But go to realisticacrylic.com, and I have more tutorials there. I have videos you can look at and watch uh, to help you get better at acrylic portrait painting. So thank you so much for watching. God bless, and we'll talk to you soon.